You know what this face is? This is the face of stress. This is the face of most people on the on the uh, on the trail to home ownership before I started Wham. Right? This is the face I see all the time, but not anymore. Not on my watch. What's going on, guys? My name is Min Win with What's a Mortgage. Welcome to our channel. The goal of our channel is to educate, empower, and to connect you with the right mortgage. We're gonna take that stress with that mm face that I used to see all the time from my home buyers. We're gonna that stops today. Today we are gonna go over phase four of home ownership, the mortgage processing phase. If you haven't checked out our other phases yet, this is a five phase series. Phase one, we go into how to find the right lender, how to shop for the right mortgage, what's the difference between a pre approval and an underwritten approval. Phase two of home ownership, how to pick the right real estate agent. Home ownership is the biggest investment you'll make in your entire life. How to make sure you find the right person to help you find your dream home. And phase three of home ownership, the house hunting phase, different strategies, different type of listings, different types of homes out there. How to use the right strategy in the right season to find the right home. And today, guys, we're talking about phase four of home ownership. We're about the mortgage process. In the next couple of weeks, we'll be going over phase five of home ownership, the closing part, okay? But today, guys, it is phase four. If it's your first time tuning in our, into our channel, no matter if you don't own a home or you own a home, no matter the phase, follow my page. You can click the notification and the subscribe button so you're notified every time we post new information, put out a market update. We're here to make sure we empower you on What's a mortgage, right? So definitely don't forget, to, don't forget to subscribe, notify. Also, this is an interactive channel, which means ask questions. The more questions you ask, the better, right? The last thing you want to do is enter into ownership or you have a home and make a bad financial decision. So ask a lot of questions. We want that heat. We want that smoke, right? No, I'm kidding. But we do want to answer all your questions. So if you have questions, please ask. Also, if we bring you any value tonight, do me a favor hit the like button. If you're serious about home ownership and the person who you're buying a home with or you own a home with is not watching this with you, do me a big favor, tag them on this video, okay? So they know what, what's a mortgage, right? So guys, let's get into it. Let's get into home ownership, right? We're talking about phase four, the mortgage process. If you wanna see the other phases, you can find it. If you're on Facebook, you'll find it on my Facebook channel. If you're on YouTube, you will find it on our channel as well. If you do need help, please reach out to me and we will definitely help you. All right, guys, so let's get into the first one, right? So before we get into it, there are five steps in phase four of home ownership, right? The five steps. The steps are the escrow open step and then the initial disclosure, ordering all inspections, the initial approval and validation and validation and correction, right? Remember during this stage, you can lock your loan whenever you want. So as soon as that EMD check clears, that's step three, or phase three, right? As soon as phase three is over, that EMD check clears, escrow opens, right? You can lock your loan whenever you want. Unless you're buying a new build and you did your deposit already, you can lock whenever you want with the lender. But if you don't have the property ready, you cannot lock your loan. But in these five steps, in the mortgage process, you can lock your loan whenever you want. Some of you guys, you want to be safe, lock it right away as soon as escrow opens. Some of you guys, you might want to gamble a little and wait to see in the process if you feel rates are going to get lower, you can lock. But once it's locked, it is locked. So make sure you tread lightly. You pay attention to the market, right? If it was me, I would play it safe and just lock it so you have peace of mind. But everybody's different. But now, at least you know when you can lock. So the first step, okay, open escrow. Open escrow, right? You're going to have escrow disclosures. We're going to go over the fee sheet, the close of escrow date, the home inspection date, the loan contingency date, the appraisal date, okay? So escrow disclosure. So now you're in escrow. That EMD check, earnest money deposit check, has cleared. So you're going to get a set of disclosures from escrow. And that set of disclosures are information you need to know about escrow. Also, it lets you know about the seller, the selling agent, the buying agent, title, who your title company is, and also the lender information, right? So this escrow packet lets you know who are the players in the game. Also, how you want to hold title, 
what's the correct spelling of your name, which we'll go over in a second, but that's your escrow disclosures. So when that EMD check, you're going to get a pack of disclosures in your current mailing address, right? They're going to mail that to you like, what is this? Don't get alarmed. They're just disclosures. And remember, in the process of home ownership, until you bring in your final funds to close, it doesn't matter. Everything is void. You're not obligated to buy the house if you don't bring in the money, right? So remember that. So remember, that's your escrow disclosure. So now, once you get your escrow disclosures, the, le the escrow can prepare your fee sheet. What is a fee sheet? So the lender is going to order something. We'll go over in a second called a loan estimate. But now escrow can give you a fee, give the lender a fee sheet. The fee sheet is going to be based on the purchase price and the loan amount. Right now that you're open escrow, you have accurate numbers, right? So escrow will prepare the title fees and the escrow fees, right? Also, what the impounds are going to be, right? Depending on the county, right? Also, uh, your payoff demand from your current from the seller's lender as well. Okay. All then when you're opening escrow, make sure you pay attention and you write these dates down. Anytime I, I tell you to write something down, remember is remember these dates when you're open escrow. You want to know the close of escrow date, which should be on the purchase contract, right? The close of escrow date. Why is that important for you to always know? Because you want to make sure you close in time. You don't pay any per diems. You don't pay any penalties. You want to make sure you know the COE, right? Also, the home inspection date. So now escrow is open. That EMD check's cleared, right? You want to go ahead and know the date that you have to go ahead and check out the property. What happens if you don't want the property? What happens if there's something wrong with it that you can't fix? The home inspection date, as long as the home inspection is done before the date, you have time to go back to the seller and negotiate. Doesn't mean they're going to do it all, but gives you time to negotiate. But once that date passed, you're kind of like, zip it, right? The next two dates, there's the loan contingency and the appraisal. Sometimes they flip-flop. In a seller's market, the seller will ask you weigh the contingency. If you do that, you will not lose your deposit. Not yet, right? But in a seller's market, right? Because the seller knows you overbid it on the property. They will tell you, the, okay, if you want the property that bad, waive your appraisal contingency, okay? So once that happens, if you do waive it, and oh my gosh, the home didn't appraise, it's off by so much, I don't have any more money. That's when you have the loan contingency, right? The loan contingency protects you because you can't qualify to buy a house if you don't have the difference of the funds to bring in the money. The lender is not going to lend more than the house is worth. So that loan contingency is there to protect you, right? But going back to the loan contingency, if you don't waive it, if the home doesn't appraise, you can go back and negotiate, right? You don't lose your deposit. But now the loan contingency. If you go past the loan contingency date and you don't release the loan contingency, what happens? They'll cancel on you. They might keep some of your deposit. You might get back all your deposit. It depends on how the sell, the buyer's agent, your agent, and the seller negotiate, okay? So it's really important that you know these dates and make sure your lender doesn't go past these dates without getting these dates completed. But you want to make sure your loan contingency, you never want to lift that, right? Unless you know for sure you're going to docs. I would not lift the loan contingency. If I was a good buyer's agent, even if the lender is slow or closing late for whatever issues, do not release the loan contingency. You want to protect your, your buyer's deposit. Once the loan contingency is done, right, they can back out. But if they'll go, hey, if you don't want me to back out, release the loan contingency. Once you release that, your deposit is gone if you don't close. So remember that, okay? So when you open escrow, you want to make sure you get these disclosures, you stay relaxed. That's why I'm telling you guys, most buyers before I started WAM that I dealt with or people I do talk to before they meet WAM, they're like, ah. Right. But now you get these paperwork and you're not overwhelmed. You know about the escrow disclosures. Now you're at peace. You have a fee sheet. Right. You know, the close of escrow day, appraisal day, home inspection, loan contingency day. Right. You can breathe. So the first step. Now you understand these things. You can breathe. Right. Breathe. Right. And now we know the escrow open step. The next step we are going to go through. Is the initial disclosures. So, like I said, once you sign the escrow disclosures, now you have the mortgage loan disclosures right in the mortgage loan disclosures there is the intent to proceed the appraisal disclosure the completion of name right and the loan estimate okay so let's break that down really quick here so the initial disclosures right you get the intent to proceed if you don't sign the intent to proceed no one can move forward right 
So the lender sends you the disclosures. In the disclosure, the important forms are the intent to proceed. It lets everybody know, hey, I'm buying this house. Also, a borrower's authorization, which allows the lender to act on your behalf to order specific paperwork or specific information, right? And now there's the appraisal disclosures. You already have, you have every right to your appraisal. The appraisal cannot get ordered till three days after the intent to proceed. So you got to sign that intent to proceed. Then there's the appraisal disclosures you sign. So you have a right to your dis your appraisal, right? Also, if they ask for a credit card for the appraisal, pay for it. I see people linger and hold on to this appraisal disclosure because they don't want to pay the five, six hundred bucks. They're spending hundreds and thousands of dollars on a home, but they don't want to pay for an appraisal or they're holding on to the five, six hundred bucks. You have your deposit at risk. Come on, guys. Hello, is anybody there? So if you have that appraisal disclosure, please sign it. The next part, in completion of your name, right? You want the complete spelling of your name. And this sounds crazy, but it happens all the time. So my dad, he writes his first name, his middle name, and his last name when he signs his signature all the time. So when, of course, he goes to sign his disclosures, right, his name, he signs his first and last, he writes his first and last name. It's a contradiction. Right. Also, if you look at your driver's license, you look at your how you file your tax returns, make sure you use the complete spelling of your name in your disclosures. Whatever is wrong, you want to fix it. You want the correct spelling of your name. Uh, if you got married and you're using two last names and you didn't get rid of your old maiden name and that's legally on your Social Security card, make sure you use it. If you're a junior or a senior, right, or a second or a third, make sure you put that in your name. Right. Don't just sign without, hey, the spelling of my name on the loan application is incorrect. Fix it. You want it done up front. The most important disclosure of all, the loan estimate. Now that escrow can provide you a fee sheet to the lender, now you get this loan estimate. It is, now you can read and understand it. Remember, the loan estimate is three pages long. The lender has three business days to send you the loan estimate, okay? So you have time to shop it. Of course, because... But of course, you have the fee sheet now. Those fees are accurate. So there's six items that has to happen before they send you this uh, loan estimate, right? There is your name. There is your social security number. There is your income. There is the purchase price, the loan amount. The last item to make a real complete application is the property address. If a lender uses a property address in their uh, pre-approval letters, they're wrong, right? That address right, begins the, the, the turn time. So within three days of that address and people and lenders that they're smart, they don't use the address until your EMD check cleared. Once your EMD check cleared, the address is, 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 is uh, it's, um, that's the address you're going to use. So once you have the address, they got to provide your loan estimate within three days. So now you have it, you can shop your loan. Okay. That's if you still want to, if not, you stay with your lender, but those are your initial lender disclosures. So once you sign your escrow disclosures and you know your CO, those are escrow dates. Now you know your initial loan disclosures, okay? So that's step two of the mortgage process. Step three, right? The ordering. This is where the smooth sailing happens. This is where people mess up. This is where loan officers who are afraid of their, their, their buyers, this is where they fall into issues. Yes, trust me. There are loan officers afraid of their buyers. This happens all the time, okay? The ordering. This is where I'm telling you guys, if you do this right, you won't look like this, right? All right, there's the ordering uh, step. It's the home inspection, termite, appraisal, BOE, EOR, VOD, any credit supplements, and updated borrower conditions. Let's get into it, right? Home inspection. We talked about it, right? You want to make sure that home inspection is done. You can waive a home inspection, but I would not recommend it. A home inspection is done just in case there's something on the home inspection that allows the home not to be livable. If it is, if, if it's not, you can't live in the house. But when you buy a house and you get financing, it has to be livable like this. If it's not in livable conditions, the lender will condition for it to get fixed. If it doesn't get fixed before funds, because the lender can't trust that you're going to fix it afterwards, but they got to condition it ahead of time, right? Any fire hazards or any issues like that. So the home inspections order. Termite. If there's termite issue, right? And you didn't waive termite, the lender's going to want those termites done up front. If you buy a home with a VA loan, you cannot waive termite. You can do it on FHA. You can do it on conventional. 
Cannot do it on VA. You're buying v you're getting a VA loan with a hundred percent financing. You cannot get away with getting a VA loan without termite. Okay, so make sure that termite is ordered ASAP. The appraisal, right? The three day intent to proceed. You order that appraisal ASAP, right? So after step two, right, the initial disclosure. In step three, you order the home inspection, the termite, the appraisal. Okay. Also, next, the VOE. Remember, even if you've been underwritten approved because of the times that we're living in right now, if they notice that on your paycheck stub or your bank statement that is declining, they can order a VOE, all right? So they're going to order a VOE from your employer to make sure you're working your 40 hours a week and that they use bonus or overtime or commission uh, to qualify you that you're still getting it. Once they order the VOE, depending on your scenario, they can order a VOR, verification of rent, right? Especially if you said that you make X, that you pay X amount for rent on your loan application, they might ask to verify with the landlord. Okay. Also, the VOD verification of deposit. Depending on your situation, your lender might want a VOD. For example, when would they want a VOD? If you work for your family member and you had a huge crease in income, they're going to want to see your paycheck stubs to validate that you're really receiving the money. If you are if someone gave you 12 months cancel checks, right, or you've co-signed for somebody and you have to show 12 months cancel checks that someone else is making the payment, they might order a VOD. It all depends on your scenario. But they pretty much always order the VOE. Uh, case by case, they'll order the VOR and the VOD. The next thing they order, any credit supplement. Anything that you said that, hey, I paid that off already, that's zero balance. Whatever the, it is on your credit, right, they order a, a credit supplement, right? Also, Updated borrower conditions, outdated pay stubs, outdated bank statements. Remember, you got pre-approved, but we don't know when you found, found that house. So the lender, let's say you found the house 60 days from now, 90 days from now, from when you got approved, they're going to ask for updated pay stubs, updated bank statements, right? If you bought, if you got pre-approved in 2020, but you're closing in 2021, they might ask for an updated reward letter if you're on social security, right? If the letters look like they expired, like let's say a 401k or something that's a quarterly statement and that quarter rolled over, rolled over, they will ask for updated paperwork. Get all this done up front. I promise you, fam, if you do all this up front, most of your troubles are gone, right? Not all gone, but at least you'll know the truth. Because one stage, what after st uh, step three, the ordering step, right? The next step is going to be the initial approval, okay? So the initial approval. The initial approval is going to consist of six items or six uh, categories. There's the credit category. There's the income category. There's the asset category. There's the appraisal, title, and escrow. Okay, so these are the six categories that are going to be in your approval, right? They're going to break down your credit. Let's say you, um, you your student loans, you didn't calculate it correctly, right? Or let's say your, um, your, your uh, collections, right? Or... You're supposed to omit a payment or something, right? They want 12 months cancel checks. If you don't provide that up in the initial uh, ordering, right? If the lender's good, they'll order that when they pre approve you, right? But some lenders, they're too afraid to tell you, ask for more paperwork. Because a lot of times, what people do is, like, well, this other lender didn't ask me for it. So why should I give it to you, right? And they're afraid to ask you for it. But you're out there, you get into escrow. It happens all the time, right? A lot of but uh, loan officers, they're afraid of their buyers because they're afraid the buyers are going to go somewhere else. So they, they don't want to ask for all the paperwork. But you're just asking for more problems. You're asking for more trouble in the future. So you want to make sure, right, you provide everything up front and don't talk back to your loan officer. If you want a smooth escrow, do not talk back to your loan officer. Get them what they, what, what, uh, what they ask for, okay? So now in the credit, they ask for all that document. Bring them the, the bank statements. These are part of your initial approval. You'll see it's conditional. They'll ask for credit conditions, income conditions. Let's say they might ask for, um, if you change employers, they might ask for the, the new letter from the employer, right? If they see your VOE and they see that they didn't mark the box that overtime is guaranteed, they might ask for a letter from your employer, right? Assets, if they see deposits they can't source or that your lender didn't ask you to source, they might ask you to source these things, okay? If the appraisal comes back, and there's, if the appraisal was done before the initial approval is done, right, they can't ask for it yet. But when the appraisal comes in, they might condition you for things to get fixed on the house. Let's say the termite comes in or the home inspection comes in, right? It's part of the appraisal, kind of, but not really. But they'll condition for 
things to get fixed. If they don't get fixed, it doesn't fall under conventional code, FHA code, USDA code, VA code, and whatever, depending on the program you're getting, right? No condition for these things uh, on the approval. If there's any liens, right? So escrow provides title over to the lender and they might condition for this lien getting paid off, that lien getting paid off. It might happen, especially in short sales, you know, you know, there might be other liens. If there might be specific liens on the property that need to get paid off. And then escrow, right? They condition for, hey, these fees are off on escrow, or hey, you're not collecting enough in impounds. The loan is funding in November. You need to collect 10 months. I see that escrow short. So all these things will be in your initial approval. Once it's all broken down, right? Uh, now you start working on the approval. So this step right here is where people, oh, I'm I'm done with the race. This is not being you you being done with the race. Your lender will call you, congratulations, you have your approval. When they say that, it's short, hey, is it my initial conditional approval? If it is, the race isn't over. This is when people typically call their, hey, uh, landlord, I'm ready to give my notice. Do not give your notice yet. Why is that? It's just a conditional approval. Conditions can pop up. That's why I recommend to you guys, and I say it all the time, get that underwritten approval. That underwritten approval well, except for the appraisal, title, and escrow, credit, income, and asset, you have full control over it. You don't control the appraisal. You don't control title. You don't control escrow. So you want at least credit, income, and asset to get cleared before you go into escrow. So some of you guys, last-minute buyers, that take some step back. Hey, do I have an uh, a pre-approval, a DU approval, or an underwritten approval? If you don't have an underwritten approval, go to your lender. Hey, can I get an underwritten approval? Because I want to see that my initial approval and start clearing my conditions. They sound bad when you're in escrow. They don't sound that bad when you're not in escrow. Why is that? Remember, you're borrowing hundreds of thousands of dollars. If you were lending out that type of money, don't you want to make sure all the credit checks out, all the income checks out, all the asset checks out, that the person who's borrowing the money has the ability to pay back the loan? But when you're in escrow, how dare they ask me for that? Oh my God, are you serious? Right now? Right now? Happens every day. So if you get that underwritten approval up front, this initial approval should be a breeze. Or in the ordering stage, this is separates the good loan officers from the great loan officers. If they can see, hey, I see these student loans. I see this thing. Let me condition and let me get this from the uh, consumer up front. So when I get my initial approval, I'm not scaring my consumer. Oh my God. For this right now, I already gave my notice. Eh, right? So definitely in this initial approval, this is where you want to okay, read me my conditions, all my conditions, or can I see a copy of my approval? If you read it slowly and out loud, you should understand it. If you don't, you know how to get a hold of me, right? 714-909-1533, right? Call us if you don't understand your approval, and we'll tell you this condition means this. All right. If your lenders dodges you, give us a call. All right, that's what we're here for. So now we know. Open to escrow opens, initial disclosure, the ordering, right? The initial approval, the fifth step right here is the validation and correction. Validation and correction, okay? This is where all loans go to die or move forward, right? This, I, this right here is like the moat, all right? So once, the, once you clear the open escrow, initial disclosures, ordering, the, ordering, ordering stuff, right? Initial approval, a validation of correction. You're going to balance out the DTI, balance out the asset, balance out the appraisal and remove all liens. Okay. What does that mean? Balance out your DTI. Let's say you get that initial approval. Once the condition comes back, if your income gets cut for some reason, or you have debt that they didn't, you didn't, your lender didn't calculate, right? Let's say it goes in that line for underwriting. The underwriter approves the, approves the loan, but they condition for 12 months cancel checks and you can't get it to your loan officer, your DTI goes up. Now they have to add that debt onto your monthly liabilities, right? If your income gets cut for some reason, once the condition actually goes back in line for underwriting, now the lender has to balance out the DTI, right? How do you balance out the DTI? Drop the purchase price. You can't, if you're already in escrow, that's why I tell you guys, get that underwritten approval up front, right? They got to drop the purchase price or bring in a bigger down payment. Who has extra money lying around, right? Or pay down debt, right? Let's say you can't get rid of your, D, your DTI is too high. You got to pay down debt. Last but not least, add a cosigner. Yeah, sometimes, and this is what's crazy, happens all the time. 
right? That's why you want that underwritten approval up front. They're going to ask you to go out and find a co-signer last minute. Now you got to change the purchase contract. You got to add that person to it, to the, the purchase contract, right? But step five is where people get stuck. If you see, feel like your lender is dodging for two, three days, you're in the validation and correction. Whatever you submit in your mind, I got all my conditions in. I'm going to be going to docs. I'm going to be signing. And, right? You're stuck in the validation correction sign, right? This is where you get stuck. This is where you got to balance out your DTI, balance out your assets. They condition for something, right, on your bank statements. And all of a sudden, on your approval, you know, your initial approval, right, you bring your condition in. And now they, they can't use these deposits, right? Well, I got $10,000 cash from selling all my goodies, and here's the receipt, but I only deposit $3,000. Well, we have to use the $3,000. We can't use the other $7,000 that you deposit because you scattered all over the place, right? So definitely, guys, they got to balance out the assets, okay? You might have to get a gift now. From a family member because they can't use all the money you have in your in your account because you can't source it right. So that's why validate and correct. This is where you either hey I got to get a gift or I got to get find a new bank account that I know have money there sitting there for a while that they can validate right. Also balance out the appraisal. What happens if the value doesn't come in and now you got to come in with a difference or the seller's got to come down or you meet somewhere in the middle and then if you have to meet somewhere in the middle and you have to come in with money. You need to provide another bank statement unless they already have a bank statement that has enough money, right? Like I said, validate and correct. The last one, if there's any liens on there, right? This probably has on, it happens more on refinances for the consumer, but the seller has to get these liens lifted. No one's going to give you money if there's liens on the property and they're in first position compared to the lender. So they're going to want all these liens validated and corrected and gone. All right. So that right there is the five steps. Right there, right? The five steps of home processing, right? Of phase four. Go through it one more time, right? You got to open escrow, right? You got escrow opens. Initial disclosure. Ordering all inspections. Initial approval. And validate and correct, right? And during that time, lock your loan. And I'm telling you guys right now, this is why I preach this underwritten approval. People hate the fact that I talk about underwritten approval because not all lenders do underwritten approvals. But if you do that underwritten approval up front, yes, you're going to have to wait a week. Just keep it at 100, you guys, right? Typically, they take two or three days. But right now, this refi boom is, is booming right now, right? Because of that, there's too much business. So you got to wait a week. So if you want to buy a house, fall in love with a payment, get that a payment approved, and then shop, right? That's why I tell you guys, be, plan 30 days before you start shopping, right? Get your, get your credit ran. Get everything validated. Get your income, get your underwritten approval. Clear your income conditions. Clear your credit conditions. Clear your asset conditions. Those three, those three categories, a consumer has complete control over and the lender. If you do that, you won't look like this anymore, right? You will have a smooth escrow process. I promise you. Because appraisal, not in your control. Title, not in your control. Escrow, not in your control. OK, so you make sure you follow these five steps in the phase four of home ownership, the home buying, uh, the S home buying process, the mortgage process. Right. So once you understand that, this is the hardest phase out of all the phases. Right. Because finding a lender, shopping, a, uh, shopping for a great deal is easy. Right. Interviewing a real estate agent, making sure they're the best, best person fits your, uh, fits your needs. It's hard but easy, right? Third one, out there shopping. Yeah, it can be troubling finding, but phase four, you're in it to win it. There's no turning back. And this is where people fall short of home ownership. This is where I feel like shattered dreams, broken hearts happen, right? The best way is to be prepared. As long as you follow these five steps in the home pro and the mortgage process phase, I promise you. You won't be like, like this, right? You will close on time. You will close with peace and you will breathe, right? So guys, that right there is phase four of home ownership. Again, thank you so much for watching our show. If you have any challenges or concerns regarding what's a mortgage, call me 714-332-2526.